Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, when, it, when you read her story, we talked a little bit about how her mom, she's like, Ya Allah, it's a girl. Because she's from Ali Imran, she was able to live within Bayt al-Maqdis, within the, the, like this, one of the harams, the, one of the holiest places on earth. She got to live there, and she was the only woman, woman that was allowed to live there. And all she did all day was like pray and feed the poor. Like she was just in a constant state of ibadah. And the angels came to her. And the angels came to her and said, Ya Maryam, oh Maryam, called her out by name. SubhanAllah, so beautiful. You see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Maryam alayhi salam by name? And calls Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam by name. It is to elevate them. And the angels call her by name. Ya Maryam, inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nasa'il alameen. Oh Maryam. Allah has chosen you, has purified you, has chosen you over all of the women. Ya Maryam, qnuti li rabbiki wa sjudi wa rka'i ma'a raki'in. Oh Maryam, be, be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And make sujood. And make ruku'ah with those who are making ruku'ah. Subhanallah. This is Maryam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives her a very, very difficult and challenging test. And Jibir alayhi salam comes and he tells her this and he's like, you're going to have a child. And she's like, wait, what? And in that moment, as she's about, she's going into labor. And she says something that's so profound. She's saying, ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasiyam man sayya. She said, if only I had died before today and was long forgotten. And I feel like I've read the men who wrote tafsir and they're like, oh, it's because she feared the pain of, feared the pain of labor. I'm like, women have had babies and they had more babies. Like, no, that's not what this is. Like, clearly you have no idea. For someone to say this, there's something inherent and core to who they are that's being threatened. She knew what her people were going to put her through. And mind you, a religious community and what they were going to put her through. As soon as Isa alayhi salam is born, he looks up at his mother and he starts to give her, in the, in the Qur'at it says, فَنَادَاهَا مِنْ تَحْتِهَا or مَنْ تَحْتَهَا And the one that was below her, or, the, or from below her, she was called and said, shake the tree. Like, be content. And when you meet someone, tell them that you won't speak for three days. When she comes back carrying Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam through the city, She's coming back, like, mind you, if, I don't know, the woman who basically lives at the masjid and feeds the poor is holding a baby, maybe she's babysitting. Maybe she found an orphan child. They didn't say any of that. They looked at her because they'd been gearing up to this. They immediately started slut-shaming her. And they told her, your mother was this and your father was this. How dare you shame your family? Sound familiar? How dare you do this? Also, I don't know how long it takes to go like this. Even as she's doing this, they're like, how can we speak to a child? I, like, subhanAllah, the amount of just, she knew this was coming. And as soon as she pointed to him, alayhi salam, he says, qala inni abdullah, I'm the servant of Allah. Atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiya. He gave me the book, he made me a prophet. He also says, wa barram bi walidati. And I am righteous and good to my mother. What I expect of men in our community is to follow in the footsteps of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and to be allies to women in this fight. This isn't about like men versus women. This is about justice versus injustice. Are we here for Allah or are we here for power? Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam said, I have my mother's back. And this is what we should expect and this is what we should demand of our men.